Welcome to Tittle Bits of History. On today's Tittle Bits of History, I'm going to cover a topic called the Great Smallpox Hoax of 1902. It was actually um, covered in a book by a man named S. Tid Byron uh, called Or the Time That. It's this little book right here, and it's full of all kinds of interesting stories about small town life and uh, living in, uh, in his particular case, Mercersburg, Pennsylvania. But interesting enough, a lot of these stories actually have a lot of um, similarities to things that you would probably hear from the turn of the 20th century from about any small town. But one chapter in here in particular was on the great smallpox hoax of 1902. And it starts out with the Byron family, of course, which was Tid Byron's uh, father and uncle. Now, the Byron family ran two tanneries um, at the turn of the 20th century. One was in Mercersburg, Pennsylvania, and the other one was in Williamsport, Maryland. And it was ran by two brothers. One was Harry Byron, who ran the Mercersburg tannery, and the other one was Ed Byron, who ran the Williamsport tannery. Now, these tanneries were only 19 miles apart, even though they were in two different states. But uh, because they were all the same business, and because of work varying from week to week, um, it was not uncommon for workers to travel between the two tanneries via horse and wagon. Now, in August of 1902, Williamsport, Maryland was suffering a smallpox epidemic, which resulted in the quarantine of the entire town. No one was allowed to leave Williamsport until the epidemic was over. You could enter Williamsport, but you weren't allowed to come back out again. They had armed civilians that were healthy, and, they were, and those civilians were required to stand guard with guns at every road going in or out of the quarantined area to prevent the breaking of the quarantine around Williamsport. And they also usually had the right, well, most of the, most of the time they had the right to use deadly force if necessary. Now, both Harry and Ed Byron were known for their sense of humor. So sending an obscure telegram with a coded dramatic effects between the two of them would not be uncommon at all. But only known between the two of them, of course. Now, a telegram was a message sent over the wire through a telegraph before personal telephones became a thing. And telegrams charged by the letter. So they were usually sent in shorthand or code. So the recipient would know um, what it was meant, but the telegram operator that took the message may have room for interpretation. Um, but in August 30th, 1902, Via the Franklin Electric Company, Harry, in Mercersburg, received the following telegram from his brother Ed in Williamsport. Quarantine broke, code, shoe and leather, critic, cobalt, decorate, definite, mind to, look out. Now to us, that is gibberish, but to Harry, that was supposed to mean something. It meant nothing to Harry, and he was going to you know, make something up. But he received the telegram, and of course he called for one of the local doctors who was in charge of the health of the Mercersburg Academy. And uh, the Mercersburg Academy was the town's local uh, preparatory school for boys. And Harry showed the doctor the telegram, and to continue to play this practical joke on the doctor, he translated the code as this. Four men broke quarantine and headed for Mercersburg in a big wagon. We'll be here tonight. One tried to get away and was caught, left at 2 p.m. Well, the doctor, knowing the frequent movement of the workers from Tannery to Tannery, uh, believed this telegram and, of course, Harry's translation. And with the health of hundreds of students uh, on his mind at the, at the Mercer Academy, the doctor actually asked to take the telegram message to the headmaster of the school. And the doctor returned to Harry at the tannery and said that the doctor and the headmaster, after examining the telegram and listening to the translation, called for a town meeting. Now, the headmaster approached Harry and asked Harry if he would stand in front of the town meeting and read the telegram. And according to Tid Byron in his book, this was the longest 50 feet his dad ever had to walk. Uh, because he knew it was a lie, and here he had to do stand in front of the entire town 
and lie, or he'd have to say, hey, you know, I made this up. This is panic. Don't don't listen to me or don't listen to this. But he wasn't going to fess up to that. So with the joke completely getting out of hand, Harry rolled with it. And uh, after the, the joke telegram was read and discussed at the town meeting, the town organized vigilante groups of two people each to man the roads in and out of Mercersburg, Pennsylvania with shotguns to prevent the entrance of a non-existent wagon full of non-existent workers that could possibly be carrying smallpox to their little town. Now, of course, the threat never materialized, of course, and uh, nobody ever heard about this imaginary wagon full of men. But Harry Byron still had to serve his time on the picket line outside with a shotgun, probably in the middle of the night, guarding the roads to his little town, waiting patiently to stop a wagon full of trouble that he knew didn't exist. And that has been a tittle bit of history.